concept of creating or summoning a monster for revenge has a long storied history. Two particular examples I find interesting and in some ways representative of many other uses. Frankenstein's monster is often synonymous with the 1931 version. Lumbering, inarticulate, but in actuality, Mary Shelley's monster was wrestling with some deep philosophical concepts in his mind and articulated them better than many scholars. Frankenstein's monster was a stand-in for humanity, born of a creator and questioning why he was put into such a cruel world. He is angry that he was born into it. That is the revenge he seeks. The Gollum of Jewish tradition, on the other hand, typically didn't have such complex thoughts. He was born of a master and usually carries out his master's wishes. Only one man can control it, and he is man. I'm your master. Lower your arms. In The Simpsons, it was used for comedic effect. Usually in such stories, to activate a golem is to put it on a path towards revenge. That said, it could be seen as a statement about the things we create in the world and the harm they can bring. Can our sense of justice turn around on us and become a curse? To talk about all these revenge monsters, we can look to these two examples as a classification or rubric. All revenge monsters can be put on a scale between Frankenstein's monster and a golem. Frankenstein's monster has free will. He isn't programmed to carry out certain actions. Personal vengeance. Once he is created, he may be seeking vengeance, but it is his own vengeance. A golem has no free will. The monster is guided by the mission it was given when created or conjured to life. Vengeance of another. The monster was not wronged, but rather he is carrying out revenge for someone else. The monster is primarily a tool for others to enact revenge. Magical mythology. There is likely some kind of spell or witch that brings the monster to life. Let's look at some revenge monsters and see where they fall on this scale. If you like this video, check out Scary Stories, available now on streaming and DVD. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark famously includes what I would consider a Frankenstein revenge monster. Harold. When two farmers knock around an old scarecrow, they soon learn what can happen from such actions. And now and then over the next few months, Harold would grunt a little bit more, and one day he even began to talk. Then one day one of the two farmers woke up and his partner was missing. And he looked around and tried to find him, but he couldn't find the partner and he couldn't find Harold anywhere. But then he looked up onto his roof, and there was Harold, spreading out a bloody skin. I've always loved that image, because I can just imagine him killing this boy and skinning him and holding up this fresh new skin that I, I, I assume he's going to wear it himself because he wants to maybe be human. Harold comes to life because he has been wronged, bullied, and his vengeance is his own. And the end goal is implied in Alvin Schwartz's story and made real in the movie. In the book, he is skinning the guy alive. But why? Harold wants to swap skin with his bully. Whether he wears the bully's skin, or in the movie, Harold and the bully magically switch places. Either way, there is an interesting subtext. The moment you get revenge on your bully, you become the bully yourself. This is one of three episodes I'll be discussing Tales from the Dark Side the movie. And this time I'll be putting it alongside a story from Creepshow 2. There are similar revenge monster stories, and both demonstrate a common theme. Poetic justice. The monster often enacts a revenge that is ironic or otherwise fitting for those who are subject to its wrath. In Lot 249, we see a golem monster, in the form of a very common version, the mummy. They are two mythologies from two different traditions that share a lot of overlap. Open tat, open nap, open his eyes, open his eyes. In this version, the mummy is conjured through an ancient scroll. It is mindless, doing its master's bidding. It is also killing people in a way that it was killed thousands of years ago, implying that underneath the murders is a revenge for the monster as well. Poetic justice. In Creepshow 2's story, Chief Woodenhead, I think we see an example of a Frankenstein golem. He has characteristics of both. He seeks revenge for others who have been wronged, but he does it out of loyalty. The shopkeepers are brutally murdered. Stop it! 
They were his friends, his family. It is justice both for them and for himself. see another example of poetic justice. The bad guy loves his hair. Hey, as soon as they see this hair, they're gonna say, Sam, get over here. So of course, Chief Woodenhead does what we expect brutal Native Americans to do for revenge. Pumpkin Pumpkinhead is a great example of a Gollum revenge monster. When Lance Hendrickson's Ed Harley has his son accidentally killed by a group of teenagers, he goes to a witch hoping that she can bring him back to life. Who are you? Um, Ed Harley, I thought. Brave ways in the dead and within my power. But she introduces a much more vengeful alternative. of the story comes from a poem by Ed Justin that includes the lines, Vengeance he considers fun and plans it with a passion. Time will not erase or blot a plot that he has brewing. Although the poem implies that Pumpkinhead is out for vengeance towards his own enemies, in fact, Pumpkinhead in the film is created with a deep connection to the person who conjures him, and that person's revenge. Pumpkinhead can be seen as a sort of avatar, acting out the darkest wishes of Ed Harley. Initially, he only wanted his son returned to him. If that can't happen, it is vengeance that he wants. Pumpkinhead can be seen just as we view golems and other similar revenge monsters. They are an extension of the hate of their masters. They are all of us when confronted with injustice, willing to succumb to our most base urges in order to get our revenge. In the end, Ed Harley realizes he has taken it all too far. He must kill himself in order to stop the chain of events he started. Hate and vengeance comes with a heavy price tag. Revenge monsters of different kinds are a great starting point for delving into themes of justice, free will, and the horrors that we face every day. What other revenge monsters do you see in the movies and stories that are out there? If you haven't already, please check out Scary Stories, now available on streaming and DVD. Thanks for listening to this episode of Scary Studies, the series that examines the stories, movies, and myths of what we find scary. All done with the ultimate message. Horror is fascinating.